Good morning and welcome. It is Pentecost Sunday. We celebrate this day in the church because the Holy Spirit came and dwelt among us. You're going to hear more about that in just a minute, but I want to welcome you because not only is this Pentecost Sunday, but this is Friend Day at South Bay Community Church. So you'll see us wearing these shirts. I have friends at South Bay Community Church because you do. If you are new to us, if you are a, a friend or a, a visitor or, or, or checking us out for the first time, I want to welcome you. My name is Brian Murphy. I'm one of the co-lead pastors here at South Bay Community Church. And we do these friend days about once a quarter just to try to invite people into our community. We want you to know that you are loved by God and loved by the family of God. So hang on, buckle up, kick your shoes off. You probably already got them off, but make yourself at home. You are welcome here. We are going to sing. We are going to celebrate God. We're going to hear from the word of God. We just want you to be part of this celebration today and know that you are blessed. So get ready. We've got some amazing worship coming up, some amazing word coming up, and we are so grateful that you chose to join us for this service today. Welcome in family. Welcome in friends. God bless you. Can't wait for you to experience what God has in store for you today. Good morning, South Bay family. God bless you. It's Friend Day here at South Bay Community Church, so if you're watching, we hope that you were invited by a friend to join our service with us this morning. We come to celebrate the Lord. This is why I got a reason, I got a reason to clap my hands, say I got a reason to sing. So ever faithful, loving life, we give you all the praise. Say, I got a reason to clap my hands. Say, I got a reason to sing and dance. Oh, I got a reason to lift my voice, my voice. Jesus, Jesus. We come to lift the name Jesus, Jesus. 
name. Hallelujah, there's healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's joy in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Healing in the name. Hallelujah. We declare your name this morning, oh God. There's power in your name, oh God. Oh, Jesus. Lily of the valley, Jesus. A bright and morning star, Jesus. You are the answer this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we honor your name. We honor your name, Jesus. We honor your name. You're holy this morning, worthy to receive honor and glory simply because of who you are. Oh, 
Come on, sing to the King this morning. You are holy. Yes, you are. Just worship him right where we are this morning. Hallelujah, Father. We give you worship this morning. We give you glory this morning, oh God. You are holy, Father. You're worthy to receive glory, worthy to receive our worship and our praise. Hallelujah. Come on, right where you are, build an altar to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lift your hands right where you're standing this morning and just let him know. What you think of him this morning, he's worthy, he's faithful, he's our God, hallelujah. We exalt your name, Jesus, hallelujah to the King, hallelujah. Yes, so the hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, as we stand in your presence this morning, God, we honor you with everything that's in us. Regardless of where we are in this very moment, Father, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, no one compares to you. There's nobody like you in all the earth, and you have been so very good to us, God. We thank you for your love and we thank you for mercy and we thank you for healing and we thank you for provision and protection. God, you are our everything this morning. And we're so glad to be called children of the living God. And so, Father, we pray that as we have come together to worship you, that you have been blessed by our praise. Lord, we love you this morning. There's nobody like you, God. Hallelujah. Worthy is your name, oh God. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you. And we bless you. Have your way in the rest of this service. And we'll be sure to give you all the glory and all the honor. And all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you, family. Enjoy the rest of the service. Well, South Bay family and friends, it is Friend Day here at South Bay. And if you are watching and you are an invited friend of one of our members, we want to welcome you in and just let you know how special you are to us. We're glad that you joined us today. I brought some friends along with me to help me with this next song. So are you ready? Here we go. Come on, everybody. Let's get ready to celebrate the Lord. You can put those hands together right where you are. Welcome to South Bay Community Church Music Ministry coming at you this morning. Come on, let's do it. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on, y'all, let's sing. Bless the Lord with me. Come on, sing it with us. Hallelujah, come on. We're going to take it up and clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Everybody, are you doing it? Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Come on, y'all, let's sing. Yeah, go. Clap your hands with me. Yeah. 
Come on, say it. Clap your hands in the air. Everybody say it. Let everybody praise the Lord. Clap your, hands in me. Clap your hands all over the building, Clap your all over hands the room. In me. Come on. Clap your hands in me. Hallelujah, sing. Hallelujah. Come on, we're giving him the highest praise. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, musicians. Let's play. Go, Nona. Come on, Joe. I see you, Tim. Yes. Yeah, one more time. Everybody singing. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 We celebrate the Lord. Good job, everybody. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Happy Friends Day. Good morning. And happy Pentecost Sunday, happy Friend Day. It is so wonderful to be worshiping with you this morning, family and friends. And if you are a friend that is visiting with us for the first time today, we are just so excited to have you join us on this very special day. Before we unpack the word this morning, though, I'd love for us just to pause and pray. It has been a very challenging week. A number of us are frustrated and angry and and we just don't understand what's happening in our country. The police brutality is just unbelievable. And so in times like these, while we are reeling and handling our emotions, it is always good to come to God in prayer. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, with heavy hearts this morning, we come before you just to, to pause and to lift before you our concerns. First, Father, we lift the family of George Floyd and, and all who have experienced the police brutality, Lord, that is just ravaging our land. God, we don't understand and we need your intervention and we need your wisdom for how to respond and what even to do with our feelings. And so in this moment, God, we come to you Father, we ask for you to heal this racial pandemic that is sweeping our land, as well as the viral pandemic that is in our world. God, we don't always know what to do, but our eyes are on you, Lord, and we know that this breaks your heart just as much as it does ours. And so, Father, we ask, we ask for your comfort for all those who are hurting and mourning. We ask for your safety and protection in the face of these injustices. And we ask, Lord, that you would show us the way and what it is that we are to do as the people of God in this hour. Come, Lord Jesus, we need you. And we trust you and we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, it's been a tough week but we serve a God who is able and who is mighty. We continue to lament, we continue to mourn, and we look for how God would have us to respond 
in these challenging times. But my friends, today is Pentecost Sunday, and God has a special word for each of us today. You may not be as familiar with Pentecost as you are with Christmas and Easter, but Pentecost is another important and key moment in the unfolding of God's story. At Christmas, God the Father gave his one and only son as a gift to us, setting in motion his spiritual kingdom on earth. At Easter, Jesus, God the Son, died so that we could be reconciled with our Father in heaven and join him in his mission to share his love to a hurting and broken world. At Pentecost, the Sunday we are celebrating today, God the Holy Spirit came, igniting followers of Christ with power to expand God's kingdom through his family, also known as the church. Now by church, we don't mean a specific church or a denomination. We mean all followers of Jesus everywhere. And as we have seen through this pandemic, the church is not a building. It's the people of God united in their love for Jesus. The church is also called the body of Christ in that we continue to be Jesus's hands and feet on this earth, sharing his love and inviting others into his family. So the coming of the Holy Spirit, the igniting and empowering the people of God makes Pentecost today the church's birthday. And we are celebrating this next part of God's story. Before we open into our text this morning, I want to give you just a little background, a little context about Pentecost. Originally, Pentecost was one of three Jewish pilgrimage festivals. Jews from all over the region, thousands upon thousands, coming from different areas with different languages and different cultures, would make this pilgrimage trek to Jerusalem, bringing gifts and offerings to the Lord. Pentecost was a festival celebrating the beginning of wheat season, and it also commemorated God giving Moses the law on Mount Sinai. So for Jews, Pentecost was a very significant day, even before the Holy Spirit came and birthed the church. It's no wonder God chose this day to do something new. Pentecost comes 50 days after Passover, which means as we open our Bible story today, we are reading about 50 days after so after Jesus's death and resurrection and about 10 days after Jesus gave his disciples his final instructions. Those instructions being to wait in Jerusalem to receive power from the coming Holy Spirit. And in today's text, that's exactly what they were doing. The Bible tells us that they had been waiting and praying. They had no idea what was about to happen or when it was going to happen, but they were waiting just as Jesus told them to do. Then, sisters and brothers, in the blink of an eye, that wait was over and something amazing happened. If you care to follow along, this morning we'll be reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? 
then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Heavenly Father, as we unpack your word today, Lord, we know that you have a word for every person in the sound of my voice. God, I ask that you would please open our hearts and our minds and our ears to receive what it is you have for us. Lord, we may be separated by distance, but we are united through your son, Lord, and it is a joy and a privilege to be in your presence and to hear your word. Bless us, Lord, in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, this really is an amazing story because God is unfolding so much in this one event. For some, it may be hard to wrap your mind around what's happening. This incident was unlike anything that has happened before or since. But there were witnesses there, three groups present, actually. And as we unpack this text, I invite you to put yourself in the story. I believe you might recognize and find yourself in one of these three groups that we're about to unpack together. Let's enter the story. It's early on the morning of the day of Pentecost. And our first group is Christ followers who are gathered together. We know from Acts 1 that there are about 120 believers. There's the 12 disciples, including the one who replaced Judas. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there along with Jesus' brothers. And there are other women disciples as well. And I'm so glad that Luke includes that point. The patriarchal nature of the culture in that day overlooked women so often. But Luke reminds us that there were women there and they were important they, to the story. The text doesn't tell us exactly what they were doing that morning. One might sur surmise that they were praying as was their custom, but the main point is that they were there together as believers, waiting in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Spirit as Jesus had instructed them to do. So everyone is there gathered in this room and the Bible says suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Have you ever heard the sound of a mighty violent wind? I've never lived in hurricane territory, but I have heard some terrifying winds before, winds that literally shook the house. Such a wind definitely would have captured their attention. And it didn't just capture the attention of the believers but the sound was loud enough to capture the attention of others in the city. Remember, the place was packed for the Pentecost festival. I love how the New Living Translation helps to paint this picture for us. It says, at the time, there were devout Jews from every nation in Jerusalem. And when they heard the loud sound, they came running. I love that picture. But that was just the beginning. Not only was the sound of a mighty wind present, but there were also flames or tongues of fire that came, separated, and settled on each person. Now that must have been a sight. We don't have a timeline of how all this went down. It may be that it happened simultaneously, or maybe it was just nanoseconds apart, but you get the impression that it was a whoosh 
type of experience, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit making a grand entrance that was both heard and seen. You know, this reminded me of when Jesus came into the world. The announcement of his arrival was also both heard and seen. Remember that magnificent choir of angels that appeared to the shepherds watching their flocks? And then there was that brilliantly bright star shining over Bethlehem for the whole world to see. Signs of the Messiah's entrance into the world. Well, for the Holy Spirit's entrance, wind and fire were not just random signs. They were manifestations that had deep meaning for God-fearing Jews and Christ followers. Going as far back as Genesis 1, we read about how the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, suggesting a wind-like presence. Jesus compares the work of the Holy Spirit to the wind when he's talking to Nicodemus about what it means to be spiritually born again. It's invisible, but you know that something has happened. When Jesus is preparing the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit in John 20, the Bible says Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. In fact, in both Greek and Hebrew, the word for spirit can also mean breath or wind. So on this day when the spirit comes in power afresh, as Jesus promised, it is fitting that this manifestation of the spirit is a mighty roaring wind. Likewise, the appearance of fire is also significant. Fire represented the presence and purifying nature of God. You may recall how God first encountered Moses through a burning bush. Or how after the children of Israel escaped from Egypt, God led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. When Moses set up the tabernacle in the wilderness, that place of worship before the permanent temple would be built, there was that same pillar of fire resting over the tabernacle each night. Again, signifying the presence of God. So these tongues of fire that came and, and then separated and rested on each person meant that God's spirit was not only present with the group of believers as it had been with the children of Israel, but now the spirit was also present and dwelling with each individual follower of Christ. My brothers and sisters, this is huge. This is a major change for how followers of God had engaged with the Spirit before this day. Before the Holy Spirit would come upon certain individuals for a specific purpose or reside with a group, with his people. But with the coming of Jesus and his death and his resurrection, all of that changed. Now, when someone became a follower of Christ, the Father, Son, and Spirit would come and make a home in them. And that's why Paul can say that our bodies are the temples of God. So just as this pillar of fire rested above the tabernacle in Moses' day, now at Pentecost, these little flames represent the Spirit of God resting on every person in that room individually, personally, intimately, the Spirit of God present with each and every one. And at the same time, the Spirit was present with the group corporately. What was birthed this day was a new reality, where individually believers were empowered by the Spirit in a personal way, and corporately they were empowered and united by the fellowship of the Spirit that they shared together. In this moment, my friends, the church was born. And it was another joy to the world moment as the rest of God's story continued to unfold. The power of the Holy Spirit had been unleashed among us and in us and through us, but not just for us. 
Remember Jesus' words when he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem? He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Sumeria and to the ends of the earth. The Spirit, the power of the Spirit is not just for us. The presence of God is not just for us. Watch what happens next. As the flames of fire are resting on each person and they are filled with the Spirit, they begin to speak in other languages as the Spirit empowers them. And what is it that they're saying? Well, simply they're declaring the wonders of God. And that's all that God asks us to do. That's what it means for us to be his witnesses. We are to declare the wonders of God that we know, that we experience, the wonders of God that are happening in our lives. Brothers and sisters, I wonder if this is the group where you see yourself, whether you see yourself as a follower of Christ, part of the family of God, part of his church. And if you do, then God's invitation for you is very clear. In fact, it's more than an invitation. You've been commissioned. The Spirit resides in you. You have been empowered to go, to share the love of God, to tell God's story, to tell of his wondrous works in your life everywhere you can, with as many as you can to go and make disciples. Well, that brings us to the second group that was present that day. I'm calling this second group the curious and interested. They happened to be there that day. Most likely they were there celebrating Pentecost, but they were drawn in by their curiosity and interest. Now, we already mentioned how this roaring wind was so loud that those in the city came running. But when they got there, they experienced something even more strange, something that fanned their curiosity and their interest all the more. Even with all of the commotion that was going on, they could hear the spoken word spoken in their own language. And they were utterly amazed. Aren't all these speaking Galileans, they asked. How is it that we can hear them in our native tongue? What was that old phrase years ago? Inquiring minds want to know. They were curious. They were interested. The truth is you actually have two curious things happening here. The first, of course, is that the spirit-filled believers were speaking in a language that they could not have known except through supernatural means, except through the power of the spirit. It was a miracle to be sure. But the second curiosity is that these were Galileans who were speaking the language. And that was significant because people living in Jerusalem regarded Galileans as backwards, uneducated and ignorant. This reminded me of the when the angels first appeared to the shepherds to announce Jesus's birth. The shepherds didn't have the best reputation either. But you know, this is so like God. God so often chooses the unlikely, the disreputable, the downcast, the least qualified, the least esteemed, and the least of these to advance his story, to partner with him in mission because God looks for hearts that are open and turn towards him. Doesn't matter what you've done. It only matters where your heart is. And we see this played out over and over and over in the Bible. When hearts are turned toward God, he's present and he uses people for his glory. And here is what I love about God. He's always pursuing us and he seeks to get our attention in the most personal and customized ways. He comes to us just as we are, wherever we at, we're at, reaching out to us, always seeking whoever has ears to hear and will respond. Luke took a great de detail 
list. Bye bye. Luke took great detail to the list of diversity of people, groups, and cultures that were gathered that day. And they all heard the message in their own native tongue. Most of those presents, even the Galileans, would have known Greek or Aramaic, the language of the Jews. So it's interesting that the Spirit of God did not use one of those common languages. Instead, the Spirit spoke to each person in a way that they would most intimately understand, the language closest to their hearts, their native tongue. And that's so like God, to be up close, personal. And with all these different people groups present for Pentecost, I believe God was not only seeking to connect with all who had ears to hear, the, the curious and the interested, I believe God was not only kicking off the mission to reach all nations, because after all, all those nations were right there, and, and, and this was a great kickoff. But I le believe God was also making a statement about his vision for this new baby church, a vision for what the church was to look like and be like, that this was a new day and God was doing something new. British pastor Roy Clement makes this point. He says the tongues at Pentecost were a pointer to the way in which the Holy Spirit was going to break down social barriers and create an unprecedented kind of internationalism. The Spirit had no ambition to homogenize the peoples of the world into a uniform Christian culture. Instead, the Spirit created a new kind of social identity altogether, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. My friends, God's desire is for a diverse people of God who would love one another across cultural boundaries and differences. There is no other power that can truly break the social, economic, racial, and any other barriers that persists in our human flesh, our human nature, except the power of God's Spirit. This is why ethnic and racial bigotry, prejudices, and, and hate that continues to exist among those who claim to be God's people is so painful. It's so frustrating and downright angering that we can't seem to unify as the larger people of God, that we can't seem to take a stand against gross injustices like what is happening right now to black and brown people in our nation and around the world. One has to ask, where are the people of God? Where is the larger church united and taking a stand together by the power of the Spirit, rising up to say, enough is enough? Division and the propagation of injustices against one another goes against God's very intention for his church. And it must grieve the Holy Spirit. But on this day in Pentecost, when the church was being born, there was in that moment a unity in the diversity. As every person heard about the wonders of God in his or her own native language, the Spirit was present and speaking. And all who were curious and interested and had ears to hear and receive had an encounter with the Spirit of God. Our text says that this group was amazed and perplexed, and they asked one another, what does this mean? They were curious, they were interested, and they wanted to hear more. Brothers and sisters, I wonder if anyone listening to me right now says, that's me. That's the group where I fit in this story. I'm curious and I'm interested. Perhaps you consider yourself to be spiritual, not religious, but you are finding you have more and more questions about God. 
Perhaps this pandemic has asked you to question, what does it all mean? Or maybe you are sensing a spiritual hunger that is growing and you are curious. Or maybe you're just fed up with the way things are and the way the world is going and and you're wondering, you're curious, is there perhaps a better way? The curious and the interested group is a wonderful group because God is there, ready to explore the questions that you're curious about, to respond to what you're interested in, and yes, to show you that there is indeed a better way. If you are in the interested and curious group, the invitation that God has for you this morning is come and see and let's discover together. So on this special day of Pentecost, the believers were there, the curious and interested were there, and there was a third group. This third group were, is the cynics and the doubters, as we see in verse 13. It says, some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. I like this one-liner that Luke includes because it's so real. Whenever the Spirit is moving, there will always be people who don't believe what they are seeing, that will always seek to come up with a rational explanation, who will seek to cast doubt and even mock its authenticity. They did the same thing to Jesus, and we can expect the same thing would be true in our day. But here's the thing. God loves and is seeking all the doubters and the cynics too. God the Spirit is gentle and he waits for the right time to make his presence known. Sometimes it's during a tragedy where people who wanted nothing to do with God discover that he is a comfort and a very present help in a time of trouble. Sometimes it's when They come to the end of themselves and they don't know what else to do. And they decide to give God a chance. Sometimes for cynics and doubters, they just simply mature. And they begin to see life in the world a bit differently. What didn't make sense when they were younger hits them a little differently now. And maybe this is where you see yourself in the story. Maybe you feel God is fine for for others, but but that's just not your thing. And you know what? That's, That's okay. Because God is patient and he will wait. He will keep pursuing you. He will keep seeking ways to connect with you. He will keep lavishing his love on you. But he respects your choice. But know this, he will never, never, never give up on you. His arms are always open wide. His love goes deep. And he is always willing to welcome you home. Sisters and brothers, we serve and love a God wherever we are in our journey. God loves us just the same. It's why Jesus came to prove his love for us. It's why the Holy Spirit came to empower us and now dwells within us all because of God's love. There's nothing we can do to make him love us any more or any less. His love is solid. And so the question becomes, will we receive his love with our whole heart? And when we do, will we share his word? Will we celebrate what he's done? Will we declare his glory everywhere we go? Because we are God's family. We are the church. And we celebrate today his love. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we are just so grateful for all that you have done. We thank you for the gift of your Son. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
We thank you for your consistent love in our lives. And so all we want to do right now, Lord, is just say thank you. Thank you for the church. Thank you that you invite us to be in your family. We are so grateful. And Father, we ask that you would just continue to be with us in the way that only you can. And Lord, we desire to be faithful, to share your wonderful works everywhere we go because of your great love for us. Be with us as we move on to the rest of our day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, if you felt something stirring in your spirit today, if as you were listening to the message, you felt that God was maybe inviting you to, to learn more, to be part of his family, just if you have some questions, we would love to speak with you and respond to you. You'll see at the bottom of your screen a, a, a number that you can text. And we will get back in touch with you right away. We would love to walk with you wherever you are in your journey. Don't let today get away. It could be the day that changes everything. God bless you. As we prepare to wrap up our service, I just wanted to take a quick moment to give a special thank you for all of our South Bay Community Church friends that joined us for our friend day today. It was such an honor and a privilege to have you worshiping with us. We are so grateful and we want to give you a special gift just as a token of our appreciation for you worshiping with us today. So on the screen below, you'll see a phone number and we'd like you to text three pieces of information to that number. One is either Starbucks or Amazon to tell us which gift card you'd prefer. Number two is your name, and number three is the email address that we can send that gift card to you. And we're gonna get that out to you as soon as possible, just as a token of our appreciation and a thanks for you worshiping with us today. The second thing I wanna remind everybody is that we do a Zoom call after service just so we can have a chance to meet and see each other face to face and and get as much of a community atmosphere as we can because we just love being with each other so below that number for the zoom is going to pop up also and we've got a special password today the password is friends so make sure you type that in and we'd love to see you in just a few minutes at 11:30 on our zoom call and finally, I just want to close by just offering a word of prayer. Uh, there is so much going on in our country today, so much pain and so much angst with this latest atrocity of Mr. Floyd in Minnesota. We know that people are, are, are just reliving all of the pain and the, and the anger and the hurt. And so we are praying that on this Pentecost Sunday, that the Holy Spirit will come and meet each one of us in our place of need. So with all of those that are dealing with the COVID crisis, with this crisis of racism in America, with the uh, issues that the African-American community is having with policing, would you please bow with me and let's usher in the Spirit of God to do the things that we can't do for ourselves. Bow with me, please. Father in heaven, we need your spirit to fall on us. For those of us who call on the name of Jesus, would you be our strength and our shield? God, be our patience and our compassion. Would you fill us with your spirit that we may face the challenges of each day but Father, give you glory in how we respond and how we speak and the things we do and we say. Father, would you allow us to lay our burdens at the foot of your throne of grace that we may be renewed. And more than anything, Father, we just simply pray in the words of our Savior, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Keep us safe Keep our loved ones safe. Keep our church family safe. And we give you all the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless your family. Hope to see you in a few minutes.